Shalom, this is Mitch Glazer, president of Chosen People Ministries. On May 14th, 2024, we celebrate Israel's Independence Day, Yom Ha'atzma'ut. The nation of Israel is now 76 years old. The Declaration of the Establishment of the State of Israel was modeled on the U.S. and other Western declarations of independence. It was read by the great David Ben-Gurion, the executive head of the World Zionist Organization, chairman of the Jewish Agency for Palestine, which is what Israel was called then, and soon to be the first prime minister of Israel. The ceremony to declare Israel's independence was held in Independence Hall, of course, in Tel Aviv at 4 p.m. on Friday before Shabbat, the Sabbath, and eight hours prior to the British military leaving the country. It took 17 minutes to read the entire 664-word document in a 32-minute ceremony. The Declaration provides the rationale for the establishment of a new Jewish state, which actually existed since the crowning of King Saul in the 11th century BC. Now let's listen to a portion of the Declaration. Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, was the birthplace of the Jewish people. Here, their spiritual, religious, and political identity was shaped. Here, they first attained to statehood, created cultural values of national and universal significance, and gave to the world the eternal book of books. After being forcibly exiled from their land, the people kept faith with it throughout their dispersion and never ceased to pray and hope for their return to it and for the restoration in it of their political freedom. Impelled by this historic and traditional attachment, Jews strove in every successive generation to reestablish themselves in their ancient homeland. This right was recognized in the Balfour Declaration of November 2, 1917, and reaffirmed in the Mandate of the League of Nations, which, in particular, gave international sanction to the historic connection between the Jewish people and Eretz Israel, and to the right of the Jewish people to rebuild its national home. The catastrophe which recently befell the Jewish people, the massacre of millions of Jews in Europe, was another clear demonstration of the urgency of solving the problem of its homelessness by reestablishing in Eretz Israel the Jewish state, which would open the gates of the homeland wide to every Jew and confer upon the Jewish people the status of a fully privileged member of the community of nations. Survivors of the Nazi Holocaust in Europe, as well as Jews from other parts of the world, continue to migrate to Eretz Israel, undaunted by difficulties, restrictions, and dangers, and never cease to assert their right to a life of dignity, freedom, and honest toil in their national homeland. Now the following portion of the Declaration poignantly articulates the aspirations and hopes of the Jewish people for this new modern state of Israel. The state of Israel will be open for Jewish immigration and for the ingathering of the exiles. It will foster the development of the country for the benefit of all its inhabitants. It will be based on freedom, justice, and peace as envisaged by the prophets of Israel. It will ensure complete equality of social and political rights to all its inhabitants, irrespective of religion, race, or sex. It will guarantee freedom of religion, conscience, language, education, and culture. It will safeguard the holy places of all religions and it will be faithful to the principles of the Charter of the United Nations. Immediately after the declaration was made, Egypt began bombing the fledgling nation, and soon other neighboring countries joined the fight. Israel declared victory in 1948, 1967, 1973, and persevered through a variety of terrorist attacks in ensuing years. But October 7th, once again, changed the landscape and Israel is again fighting for her life and political and moral legitimacy. With the rise of anti-Semitism in the West, and especially in the U.S., it's again clear that a Jewish nation is more important than ever before. Israel is a haven for Jewish people, and as believers in the Jewish Messiah, we must all do what we can to pray for and support Israel, who is our greatest ally in the turbulent Middle East, we must also oppose anti-Semitism, which is defined as the hatred of the Jewish people, God's chosen people. As the Bible says, I'll bless those who bless thee and curse those who curse thee. 
standing for the Jewish people and Israel is pleasing to God, it's also now more important than ever to share the gospel with Jewish people as Jewish people in and outside of Israel are seeking the Lord in the midst of such great hardship. Let's celebrate God's faithfulness to his covenant with Abraham and the Jewish people. Please remember to pray for the release of the hostages who have now been held for 221 days and to also pray for the peace of Jerusalem this Yom Ha'atz Ma'ut.